I'm sure if you are watching this video, it's because you want to learn more about Thai culture, right? Great, you're in the right place, so stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel La Thailand de Pia. I'm a French and English speaking tour guide in Thailand and this is my very first video in English. Before we get started, if you are already a subscriber, please let me know in the comment section below and say hi. If not, remember to subscribe so that you will see when I make another video with more detail about what you should know before you come to Thailand. Right. Today, we are going to discuss about what to do and what not to do when you come to Thailand. Uh, this video can be interesting and helpful to anyone who plans to visit the land of smiles. Personally, I think knowing some of culture and traditions of the country you are going to visit can really help you from any embarrassing situations. And in Thailand, there are quite a few things you should not do to bear in mind. Okay. Today, I'm with my parents and we would love to show you how to behave when visiting uh, religious places, for example, Buddhist temple. And here are my top five suggestions from my personal experience as a tour guide. Let's start with number one, knowing when to take off your hat and your shoes. Yes, quite important. The first thing you should do is to remove your hat and your shoes before stepping in any buildings that are inside temples. Most of the time you will see a sign that says, please remove your hat and shoes. But do you know why they have to do this? The answer is not very difficult to guess, right? Of course, it's for respect, but there's also something else worth knowing. Many people may not know that traditionally monks used to be barefoot because it's one of the signs of detachment in Buddhism. Another reason is to make sure that the floors are as clean as possible for when we put our forehead to the ground when we're paying respect to Buddha. Keeping your hat torn could also be seen as being rude in our culture because you would be seen as being higher than Buddha and also monks. Taking off your shoes is a general rule in 99% of Buddhist temples. Yes, I say 99% because in some religious places, for example, the Golden Mount Temple and the Chinese Buddhist monastery in Chinatown, over there, they will ask you to keep your shoes on because of the lack of free space to put your shoes. To be honest, it's quite unusual for us because we've always been taught to leave our shoes outside before entering a temple. That's why you still see many Thai leave their shoes at this temple because we are so used to it. Number two, never point your finger or your feet at people or Buddha images. So on the subject of sitting in temples, for information, nearly all items are highly respected, especially images of Buddha. So pointing with your finger or with your foot could be considered impolite because sometimes there are some ashes of late kings that are buried just under the principal Buddha image, usually housed in the ordination hall. For example, there are some ashes of King Rama I in Wat Po or the temple of reclining Buddha and King Rama II in Wat Arun or the temple of dawn. Number 3. 
Number three, monks are highly respected and women cannot touch them. In Thailand, all Buddhist plants are required to be ordained once in their life. It could be for just a short period like two weeks or three months during Buddhist land or even a year if they feel comfortable in the temple. This tradition is still quite common and the usual age for being a monk is around 20. day people got married at an early age and men were supposed to be the head of the family. Uh, traditionally being a monk is one of the best way to learn how to stay kind and conscious in Buddhism and when you are a monk there are about 227 rules to follow and one of them is not to touch women. So if you are a woman please try to keep a distance when you are close to monk. Uh, when handing something to a monk or making married, you can put all items on a small cloth that every monk usually has with them. Number four, showing public display of affection. Traditionally, Thais rarely show their affection in public, especially in temples. Nowadays, it's becoming more common to see the new generation hugging or holding hands on the street, but this shouldn't happen in religious places. Sometimes I see foreigners kissing or hugging in temples, and some even try to imitate Buddha's postures or jump in front of stupas or a sacred statue just for a funny photograph. As a Thai person, I can say that we are not really happy about this and we really want visitors to understand how we feel. I understand that our cultures are different, that's why I am here to explain so that you can understand more about our beliefs. Some of you may have already seen me in temples and if you are watching this video, I would love to say thank you again for trying to adapt to what you do in our country. Okay. Now we come to the last one, number five, which is shouting should be avoided in temple. I wouldn't say that it's forbidden to speak very loud when you have to talk in the temple. Just avoid shouting as temples are considered a sacred place where monks and Buddhist followers come to pray, listen to sermons or to meditate. So next time if you come to the temple, please try to be as quiet as possible, we would really appreciate it. So you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. That's it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something new today. Okay, if you have any suggestions about what to do in the temple, feel free to share them in the comment section. And lastly, if you found my video interesting, please hit the like button and share this video to people you think would appreciate it too. Don't forget to connect with me on all of my social media. I've got my Facebook and my Instagram, La Thailong de Pia, which means Beers Thailand in English. Thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon. Sawadee ka! Oh.